Okie dokie. So I'll just do a quick video on how you find resultants of vectors. So we have a plane, and the plane is moving forward with a force of 50 kilonewtons. And we could maybe have some wind on the plane, so the plane is being blown also to the left uh, by a force of 20 kilonewtons. So how do we find out what the resultant direction of this plane is, so which way is it actually going to end up going? Now if we use common sense, we know that if something's going up and being pushed to the left, it's kind of going to go in this diagonal direction. But we don't really know um, the amount of force that's making it go in that direction until we use something called Pythagoras. So when you, ever you have two vectors at right angles to each other, what you need to do is you need to do something called the tip-to-tail rule. Now what the tip-to-tail rule is, is you pick up one vector and you put the one vector onto the top of the other vector. So you go from one of the vector's tips to the other vector's tail. So in order to work out what the direction of this plane is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this vector here and this one. So I'm going to move them over here so we've got a bit more room. So we drag this one over there, that one over there. And I'm going to pick this vector up and I'm going to put it on the tip of this one. So if I grab this one here and I move it over there, I'm just going to move this down and I move this one here. So now what we can do is when they're tip to tail, we can actually find out the resultant by joining these up. So I'm going to get my little line tool. Let's get a red and an arrow. And so the resultant is in this direction. Okay, which is what we said before. Now in order to work out how much that is, we need to use something called Pythagoras. So what I'm going to do is we know this side of the triangle, we know that side of the triangle. So we know using Pythagoras that if I square this one and add it to this one squared and then square root, I will find the hypotenuse or the size of the hypotenuse. So I'm going to do um, a squared is b squared plus c squared. And we want to find the hypotenuse, so a squared is going to be 50 kilonewtons. I'm going to, I can leave it in kilonewtons, um, it just means the answer will be in kilonewtons. Normally what you do is you change to newtons, but for this type of question it doesn't matter too much. So we've got 50 squared plus 20 squared. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to square them each and then I'll square root the end. So A is going to be the square root of 50 squared plus 20 squared. Okay, now unfortunately me being silly, I don't have a calculator with me, so I'm going to have to do some mental maths. So 50 squared is 50 times 50, so 5 times 5 is 25, add two zeros, it's 2,500. 2,500. 20 squared is 400. So this is going to be the square root of 2,900. And what I will have to do is I'll have to pause this video and go and get a calculator for you uh, to work this out, because I don't know about you, but I'm not insane, and I can't do that in my head. Okie dokie, so we're back and I have a calculator, so I'm just going to type in square root of 2900 and it says it's 53.85, so I'm just going to say 53.4, so 53.4, and it's in kilonewtons, so kilonewtons. So I'm just going to check that one more time, just to make sure. Seems a little small for me, so I'm just going to check it, it might be correct, square root of answer is... Yeah, 53.4, so 53.4 kilonewtons. So it's a good idea to um, get in the habit of checking if your answers make sense. Okay, so then what we need to do is the next bit is we've got the magnitude, so then we need the direction that this plane is going to move in. And we always work out the direction from the horizontal. Um, you don't have to, you can work it out from the vertical, but I always find it easier to do horizontal. What that means is I need to find this angle here, because this is the horizontal. So this is going to be my theta. Now I've got, if you notice, I've got two sides. 
Um, I've got all, actually I've got all three sides, but I'm going to use the original values. So I can use tan to work out this angle from the horizontal. So I know that tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So this is my opposite, so it's opposite my angle. This is my adjacent because it's next to my angle. So it's simply 50 over 20 over 20 and then theta is going to be tan to the minus 1 of 50 over 20 like so and when I put that in my calculator so tan to the minus 1 of 50 divided by 20 we get 68.2 degrees And if you specify if there was enough room, I would say 68.2 from the horizontal, but unfortunately I run out of room. Um, but that's all there is to it. And um, just remember to put them tip to tail first, draw, join them up, use Pythagoras, and then use tan to work out the angle.